Denim and cellulose insulation are the most popular recycled insulation products. They are considered to be eco-friendly since they have a high recycle content and they give discarded materials a second life. In this video, we're going to look at how they're made, their main differences as well as their pros and cons. Let's start with denim or cotton insulation. Cotton picking machines remove cotton from the plant, compress it into large blocks and send it to processing plants or cotton gins. After it's cleaned, stretched and spun into fibers, it's mixed with blue indigo dye and sodium hydrosulfite. Denim jeans are usually made of 100% cotton, which can be broken back down into fibers, unlike other clothing which are made of blended materials. At the end of their first life, donated jeans are sent to the Blue Jeans Go Green and Phoenix Fibers denim recycling programs. The jeans are cut down into small pieces, while zippers, buttons and rivets are removed from the mix. The remaining material is shredded and bundled into 1,000 pound bales. These bales are shipped to the bonded logic facility that unweaves the denim and turns it into fibers that look like blue cotton candy. It is mixed with other cotton fibers and a non-toxic borate solution which acts as a fire retardant and mold and mildew repellent. A variety of products are made from denim fibers. Ultra touch denim insulation is available in bats and loose fill and can be used in walls, ceilings, floors and crawl spaces. Ultra touch retained barrier can be used in automobiles, aircraft and boats. It is also used to make acoustic panels, thermal packaging, HVAC duct liners and spa insulation. Now let's look at how cellulose insulation is made. Wood chip waste from logging and sawmill operations are broken down in pulp digesters. A thin layer of liquid paper pulp is deposited on a wire screen. When water is removed, the cellulose fibers bond together, forming paper. This is fed through a series of heated rollers which press and dry it. After being used and discarded, recycled paper and cardboard boxes are loaded on a conveyor belt. Powerful magnets remove staples, paper clips and any other metal. The remaining paper is shredded and treated with boric acid or ammonium sulfate to prevent decay and repel pests, mold and mildew. Green Fiber sells a sanctuary, blown-in or spray-applied insulation. Contractor grade 30-pound bags, DIY 19-pound bags, 2-hour fire-rated insulation, insulation designed specifically for agriculture structures, and a low-dust, loose philatic insulation. Now let's compare their costs. I bought the 6-pack of R6.7 16-inch by 48-inch bats at Home Depot for $36.72 I bought this 19 pound bag of green fiber cellulose insulation at Home Depot for $9.68. Denim insulation is supposed to achieve an R value of R3.5 per inch. It costs $1.12 per square foot and has a density of about 3 pounds per cubic foot. Cellulose is very similar with R3.5 per inch, a cost of $1.20 per square foot and a density of 3 pounds per cubic foot. Both of these products are marketed as eco-friendly alternatives to fiberglass insulation. While they have a slightly higher R value per inch, they are approximately twice the cost and twice as dense. Both of these insulation materials work on the same principle as other fibrous insulation like rock wool and fiberglass. The material itself doesn't provide much thermal resistance, but it's the air trapped in pockets between the fibers, which you can see at a microscopic scale, that act as an insulator. Denim insulation is made of many short, broken cotton fibers that surprisingly hold together quite well. You can find pieces of cotton, yarn and of course denim. However, it's very dense, difficult to fluff up and never regains its loft. It tears apart when you try to introduce air into the bat. This insulation is supposed to be 1.6 inches thick, but it's actually close to 1 inch, so it will have a lower R value than it claims. The good thing is that the company seems to take customer feedback into account. In the past, users have complained that the 16-inch bats were too wide to fit into stud bays, which resulted in air gaps because the bay is actually 14 and half inches wide. So the bats are now 15 inches wide. The extra half inch allows you to friction fit them into place. I wasn't able to get my hands on cellulose bat insulation. The only thing I could find was this loose fill. I know it's not fair to compare loose fill to a bat because it obviously disintegrates easily. This block of green fiber cellulose insulation looks like chewed up cardboard with tiny pieces of paper. It's very dusty and messy. My gloves and clothes were covered in a fine dust.
Unlike all other insulation products I've reviewed, this one is very different. It's not made of knitted strands of paper. It's just mush. It kind of reminds me of papier-mâché sculptures we used to make as kids. Denim cotton insulation doesn't cause any itching or irritation. Even though you can install it without gloves, safety goggles, or a dust mask, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not toxic, but you don't want to inhale too many cotton fibers. You can't cut it very easily with an X-Acto or a bread knife, but scissors work. Since customers have had issues cutting these bats, the company now makes them with perforated seams. It is installed just like fiberglass, so there's no learning curve associated with using this product. It can easily wrap around pipes, wires, and outlets in stud bays. Cellulose bat insulation is installed in the same way as denim, but installing blown-in is completely different. It can be installed two ways, with dry or damp fiber. Dry fiber is most commonly used for retrofits in open attics, but it can also be used in enclosed walls and cathedral framing cavities. It is fed into a hopper which breaks down the clumps of cellulose and blows it through a 2 to 3 inch diameter flexible hose. Damp cellulose, on the other hand, is used for open wall cavities in new construction. The fiber is mixed with water and sometimes an adhesive as it's being sprayed. The water dampens the surface of the wall cavity and creates a sticky contact bond. The wall cavities are overfilled and then scraped flat, just like spray foam insulation. Windows, doors and electrical boxes must be protected with plastic sheathing and tape prior to installation. You must not use too much water or close up the wall before cellulose dries out because it can lead to mold, mildew and rot. Generally speaking, cellulose installs generate a lot of dust so you must wear eye protection and a mask. Some users have complained that the dust can enter your HVAC system and spread it all around a house. Both of these products have good acoustical properties. Denim insulation has an NRC or noise reduction control rating of 1.15 and an STC or sound transmission control rating of 52. Cellulose insulation has an NRC rating of 1 and STC rating of 44. They are both better than fiberglass which has an NRC rating of 0.9 and STC rating of 39. So far neither product really stood out and then I did the water repellency test. Denim insulation allowed water to pass right through. It was soaking wet on both sides. Cellulose insulation surprisingly performed much better. It did not allow water to pass through the block and it contained moisture in the area with direct contact. Long-term exposure to water can cause mold to grow on cellulose insulation and on the wooden beams and the plywood that it touches. Cellulose is hygroscopic, which means that it attracts and holds water, causing it to sag. Another concern is that the chemicals used in cellulose make it potentially corrosive in wet environments. The water repellency of both of these materials is a little disappointing. Now for the fire test. Denim insulation singed, but the fire did not spread. It also didn't give off any acrid smoke. One would think that cellulose paper insulation would catch fire easily, but it performed just as well as denim. It turned black, but the fire was put out immediately. The high percentage of borate in both of these products make them really good fire retardants. They have a class A fire rating. Finally, let's discuss the green and eco-friendly aspect of these two types of insulation. They are both products of a circular economy, which tries to eliminate waste, continually use resources, and prevent items from ending up in landfills. Denim insulation, which has 85% recycled content, diverts an estimated 300 tons of material from landfills every month. It's also a zero waste production because any scraps can be shredded and returned to the raw supply. It doesn't contain any VOCs or volatile organic compounds, which can off-gas, and it's 100% recyclable. Bonded Logic also donates a portion of their insulation to Habitat for Humanity, which builds homes for families in need, and I think that's a noble and admirable act. However, there are a couple of things that I don't agree with. 
denim insulation is marketed as a low carbon footprint product that isn't as energy intensive and resource intensive as mineral wool insulation because you are starting with an existing product. I think that's unfair because we should consider the energy footprint of the entire life cycle of denim all the way to the cotton plant. I'll provide a link in the description to the environmental cost of making a single pair of jeans. As great as this product is, it is not a solution. It's like slapping on a band-aid on an infected wound. We should be tackling fast fashion, rampant consumerism and planned obsolescence of clothing. We should be fixing the root cause of the problem while creating products like these. However, like I said in another video, we live in a consumer-driven economy, so reduction of consumption will never be emphasized, unfortunately. Cellulose, which has 85% recycled content, also diverts paper and cardboard from landfills. It's also biodegradable, so after its useful 20 to 30 year lifespan, it will begin to decompose. While the fire retardant chemicals like boric acid prevent it from being recycled into new insulation products, it can be used as mulch and compost to promote healthy plant growth. These products are comparable to fiberglass insulation in terms of performance, but they are twice the cost. They are an excellent idea, but unless manufacturers can bring down the price significantly, they won't be an attractive alternative to fiberglass. Maybe denim insulation should be used for its acoustical properties rather than for its thermal performance. Cellulose insulation seems to be a very popular option for attic retrofits because it seems to work well with the way older homes were built. Hope you enjoyed this denim versus cellulose insulation comparison. If you have any questions about these products or if you're interested in other insulation products, leave me a comment below. I'll also link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.